Good morning. Uh, I just realized yesterday that we're only a few days from the summer solstice, aka midsummer, aka Lisa, as it's known to uh, some pagans and uh, witches. So I thought I'd make a quick video about um, about what I do um, this time of the year, really, to celebrate. Uh, because uh, I'm in Sweden and I tend to celebrate in a rather sort of Swedish traditional way. Uh, we have a holiday in Sweden uh, at this time of year, uh, which is kind of a big deal. I, I think that along with Christmas, it's the most popular holiday. Um, so, so I tend to just celebrate uh, midsummer, as we call it, uh, in the traditional Swedish way. Um, midsummer evening uh, is almost no, is always on a Friday, so it's not always uh, on the actual uh, solstice, but it's uh, usually just a few days uh, between. And this year it's uh, on the same day. Uh, and it's uh, I think that um, um, w when I look at the Swedish traditions. It seems to be like the most, uh, on the surface, the most sort of overtly pagan uh, holiday. Uh, there's supposed to be a saint uh, that we're celebrating according to the church, but that seems to have never really taken root uh, in Sweden. Uh, we, we never ever go to church, no one does, for, uh, for midsummer. We, I I never heard of this saint growing up. Uh, and so so I thought I'd start about talking about the <clears throat> the history. We don't know for sure that there was uh, any midsummer celebration at this time of year uh, in pre-Christian times. It seems that during the Iron Age there was a midsummer celebration, but that was in July. Uh, not by the soul season, but that kind of makes sense because here um, July is when it feels like the middle of the summer that's when you get the best weather when it's the warmest when it's the sun sunniest uh, Mid-June as we have now still feels very much like the beginning of the summer and the weather is uh, not uh, Necessarily very good. I mean I just checked. Today it's uh, 16 degrees centigrade. Um, it's cloudy. We're expecting rain, and it's rather windy. So you also have the wind chill on top of the only 16 degrees. <laughs> so, um, and this is quite common weather uh, this time of the year. So, so wait another month, and it will be much nicer. So it makes sense to to have a midsummer uh, in July instead. Um, and and we don't know that that the the summer solstice has ever been celebrated um, in pre-Christian times in uh, in Scandinavia. There seems to have been celebrations like uh, on the British Isles. Of the solstices, we, we because they have uh, these uh, monuments that seem to be aligned to the solstices. We don't have that here. We know that uh, during the Bronze Age, people were um, worshiping the sun one way or the other. So of course, then it's possible that that they they had celebrations during the um, during the solstices but we don't really know for sure um, using the time around the solstice for the midsummer celebrations actually seems to be coming from uh, from the Christian church at least um, as far as we have uh, you know sources um, because they did that uh, in Christianity already in the 300s, which is way before it even came to Scandinavia. Um, so it seems like for a while there was the Christian 
holiday around the solstice and then there was the pagan holiday uh, in July but it seems like um, over time there has been a shift towards celebration during the solstice instead probably because that's what the church wanted yeah. <clears throat> it's said that um, um, the church wanted um, permission to hold public celebrations on this holiday uh, because the the folksy uh, midsummer traditions were uh, not to their taste so, so they wanted to to replace them with their own churchly things instead uh, so that's what seems to have been happening um, during the 13th uh, or 14th uh, no the 13 and 1400s and um, yeah th that seems to be um, the history basically uh, but as I said the folksy traditions have probably always had a, a fairly sort of pagan um, feel to them uh, it's probably been much about uh, fertility and things uh, and ensuring good growth that's probably I mean why else would the, the Christians uh, bother um, changing the, the celebrations and uh, I personally uh, because we have this um, um, midsummer that lends itself very well to um, um, to pagan celebrations I, I don't really celebrate the solstice I don't celebrate Lisa I just do the the Swedish uh, midsummer thing uh, with my family we have a lot of uh, traditions uh, as a lot of Swedes do uh, surrounding um, midsummer uh, and we start all over already early in the day we, we celebrate with the family I think I said the, the extended family so we're usually about 30 people all ages and uh, so we get together uh, usually in the sort of family summer place where each family has its own uh, little house uh, on an island and we get together there and usually what happens there are several things that need to happen uh, in preparation for the actual celebration and we tend to do that in a festive way too so we we um, divide ourselves into groups to do these things uh, uh, one one important thing of the midsummer meal is the potatoes fresh potatoes preferably some you grown yourself but we don't usually do that but um, so someone is going to have to provide 30 to 40 persons with potatoes that need to be scrubbed so we usually get together and do that so because it's kind of a boring thing to do if you're just sitting by yourself so we get together on the lawn if the weather is nice enough to do that and then there is um, another group that go and um, pick flowers and uh, leaves for the midsummer pole um, which I'll be talking about more uh, later but that's like uh, the most significant thing traditionally in the Swedish midsummer celebrations is the midsummer pole and it's supposed to be dressed in leaves and flowers so someone has to go and and pick them and then sort of dress the pole so that's what we do and then um, you know we prepare the meal and, and we get the pole ready we and we raise the pole which is as I said a big thing putting it in place and uh, we we all get together for that and then we have our um, our uh, midsummer feast uh, which is very traditional it's potatoes with um, sour cream and chives and um, herring like pickled herring is a big thing in Sweden we have that for pretty much all the holidays but in particular uh, for midsummer that's uh, what you're supposed to have 
Oh, and dill. You boil the potatoes with dill too. That's like the traditional. And then for dessert, you usually have strawberries. And we tend to have strawberry cake. And um, and I think that's like a pretty standard midsummer um, celeb midsummer feast. Uh, what well, we do also because w we have this place, uh, which is very close to to the sea. We're on an island. And there's a very narrow strait between our island and the next island. And there's quite a lot of boat traffic there in the summer. So uh, when we see a, a boat passing through, we wave at them and they wave back. And it's all very nice. And after that, we, we play games. Oh, I forgot another important thing, which is a big thing in, in Sweden usually, is that you have these traditional songs. You drink schnapps and you have these traditional songs that sort of goes with the schnapps drinking you you uh, you sing the song and then you take a shot so there tends to be quite a lot of drinking uh during the midsummer celebrations um and then we play games uh traditionally you dance around the midsummer pole uh, and then later in the evening we tend to just um, hang around eat some snacks um and and sing some more usually someone has a guitar uh, so we just sing and, and talk and eat and um, I think that's basically it yeah we do wreaths too um, to put on the head mostly for the kids and uh, also with flowers and leaves which is also one of these uh, very traditional Swedish midsummer things uh, what else can I say Mm. There is this really nice sort of folklore thing that we have that I've personally never done, but I grew up being told about it. Like, if you on Midsummer Night, if you um, walk over or like climb over seven fences and uh, pick seven different kinds of flowers and then you put them under your pillow when you sleep, you're going to. Uh, dream of the man you're going to marry yeah. and I'm sure there are a lot of more of these sort of folkloric uh, traditions surrounding the midsummer because as I said it's a big thing here uh, but I don't know them I, I did some very quick research uh, and I couldn't find anything uh, but but I'm sure it's there if I would uh, have spent more time and as for the midsummer pole as I said it's probably uh, came to Sweden from Germany again uh, during the 13 or 14 hundreds um, so again that doesn't seem to be uh, an ancient pagan tradition but I'm going to show you let me see here if I can show you this is what it looks like and uh, I guess if you're like very Christian you can say that uh, there's a cross there but Seriously, that's not what I'm seeing um, at all. Um, I think it's pretty clear that uh, that pole is about something completely different. Um, and yeah, as I said, it's dressed with uh, with flowers and uh, and leaves, and usually people uh, dance around it. And that design isn't even the most sort of. Um, um, you know the most uh, graphic one or whatever you want to call it uh, there are other designs that aren't as common where you have the pole and then you have rings like going around it this way instead so you have the pole in the middle and then rings around like that uh, which uh, you know there's definitely no cross there at all so yeah um does not really strike me as very Christian. It looks much more fertility based <laughs> to me. Uh, I think I covered everything I wanted to say. Um, this video actually did turn out a bit longer than I expected. Um, so um, that's it. That's what I'll be doing for uh, midsummer. Um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe.